Just a quick reminder to everybody who's joined us, please make sure that your cell phones and iPads and everything are turned on to silent. Our next presentation will be from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Thanks for coming. Damn, Hope you enjoy this. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Hi, thank you for being here. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. You guys, you guys wouldn't let more girls in your team, man? <laughs> They're really crushing pins for the girls. <laughs> right. Hello, I'm Mitch Hyatt. We are here today representing Chief Promotions, a new, innovative marketing firm serving the agricultural industry. Our newest clients, the farmers of the Rolling Hills Orchard Cooperative, have asked us to produce a plan launching their latest product, Zapple, regionally in advance of a national campaign. Zapple is an apple infused with the same amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee. This product looks, tastes, and provides the health benefits of a traditional apple, along with a caffeine boost. Rolling Hills Orchard Co-op has production locations throughout Michigan and Vermont, and they hold exclusive rights to the caffeine infusion of apples. Zach Steffen will now introduce the market size and potential. The market size for Zapple is a portion of the overall caffeinated beverage market. A combination of coffee, soda, energy drink, and other caffeinated beverage sales, which totals to approximately $48 billion. Energy drink products have experienced the largest amount of sales growth in the caffeinated beverage industry uh, with uh, increasing sales of 240% over the years of 2004 to 2009. Apples are America's go-to snack for a healthy choice, and according to the USDA, apple consumption in America is 15.82 pounds per capita. The market size for Zapple can be quantified by looking at the cities where Zapple will be introduced. By focusing on New York and Chicago, we are reaching Zapple's premier target market. Demographic information obtained from the U.S. Census Bureau shows that the number of people Living in uh, Cook County, Illinois, between the ages of 20 and 45, is almost 2.1 million. That number for New York is 3.2 million, making the total number of potential customers for the combined markets over 5.3 million people. In addition to the potential customers and sales, the market potential for Zapple is also comprised of the stores where Zapple will be introduced to during the first three years of business. Zapple's New York City presence will begin by being sold in the nearly 300 Dwayne Reed drugstores in the New York City limits. Dwayne Reed is currently ranked as the fastest growing drugstore chain in the industry, number one in sales per square foot with per store annual sales of $6.5 million. Zappel's New York City presence will continue to grow by being sold in the over 100 Hess Express convenience stores. Zappel will be introduced to Chicago's over 150 7-Eleven convenience stores in year two. 7-Eleven is one of the nation's largest convenience store chains, and according to their website, nearly one-third of the six million people who stop by a U.S. 7-Eleven store each day purchase immediately consumable food. In year three, Zappel will be sold in Chicago's over 150 Walgreens drugstores. Walgreens is the nation's largest drugstore chain, and last year had record profits of $2.7 billion. Now, here's Zach Orwig with the customer profile. Zappel's customer focus will concentrate on 20 to 45 year old working adults in metropolitan New York City and Chicago. 40% of both of these cities' populations are made up of this age range. And by marketing here, we can reach a total of 9.5 million consumers. According to a Johns Hopkins University study, 90% of American adults consume caffeine on a daily basis. And market research has shown that New York City and Chicago 
are the two most caffeinated cities in the United States. These two cities spend 2.9 times the national household average on caffeinated products. Zappa will be entering the caffeinated and coffee beverage market. Here are several items that have held a high percentage of the market since 2004, a time in which the market has grown over 240%. As you can see, the Zappo's calories are much lower than most of these products. That is because the Zappo contains natural sugars, while these other products contain artificial fillers. These natural sugars lead to a more sustained energy rise in blood sugar levels, leading to a longer energy rise. The Zappo also contains many important nutrients for your daily dietary needs, including vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, magnesium, potassium, and fiber. Along with these, the Zappo also contains boron, which promotes bone health. These nutritional factors set our product apart from competitors. Now, here's Nick White with the business proposition. We firmly believe that Rolling Hills Orchards should promote Zappo as a healthy alternative to caffeinated beverages, ultimately appealing to on-the-go young professionals. By looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, it is clear that this product has an outstanding opportunity to gain 25% market share and 60% and brand recognition by year three. The strengths of Zappo include its health benefits, such as vitamins, nutrients, and a natural energy boost that lasts over a sustained period of time. Another strength of Zappo is its ease of consumption and transportation. You no longer have to worry about spilling that hot cup of coffee on your lap and ultimately ruining your day. An opportunity for this product is consumers' increased interest in healthy eating. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, there's been over a 10% increase in fruit consumption in Illinois and New York since 1997. With 90% of young working adults consuming caffeine daily, this is an opportunity that will allow Zappo to expand in more cities and future years of business. However, like all new products, adversity is ever present. A weakness of Rolling Hills and Zappo is the loss of Zappo's patent right in 20 years when it expires. Threatening the success of this company and Zappo is consumers' loyalty to brands such as Red Bull and Starbucks and their dependency of maintaining a culture that goes with them. After reviewing the SWOT analysis, it is clear that this product will excel in New York City and Chicago due to its simplicity and healthiness. I will now introduce Kat Catherine Ayers, part of the Marketing Action Plan team. I, along with Mason Schoolcraft, will now describe the action plan to introduce Zappo into the market. Zappo's main product placement will be in convenience stores. An individually wrapped Zappo, such as the one on the table to your right, will be located next to the coffee machines and cost $1.99. Additionally, three Zapples will be packaged together in an airtight container resembling a tennis ball can, which is also on the table. It will be located in the refrigerated section and cost $5.50. Zapple will be released on January 2nd, 2013, which is the first workday of the new year. This date was chosen to correspond with not only the start to a new year, but also many resolutions to become healthier. We are confident that with the use of our Gorilla, along with traditional mass marketing techniques, that Zappo will be successfully introduced into the market. Mason will now describe the action plan for New York City. To create hype behind the release of Zappo, we will advertise on a billboard in Times Square one month before the release date of Zappo. This billboard will have the slogan, Countdown to Energy Independence, and will be continued for two months following the release of Zappo. 695,000 people enter Times Square in our target demographic daily. And also, we will use guerrilla marketing in our advertising campaign. This will be done with red Volkswagen Beetles driving around New York City, passing out free product information and product safety. Also in year one, there will be a strong internet presence. This will be done with our website, Facebook account, Twitter account, and Pandora ads. Pandora Radio is a great way to reach young working individuals. 56% of Pandora's target audience is in our target audience, so the transition is seamless. 
Also, product information on the internet and Google will be controlled by Chief Promotions. Also in year one, there will be a sponsorship of the U.S. Tennis Open. This will be done as an on-site text-to-win promotion where people will be able to text in and guess how many Zapples are in our giant canister. The U.S. Open being hosted in Flushing, New York made an easy transition to sponsoring this along with the design of our container. The winners of this promotion will win two tickets to the U.S. Open and also we will advertise on electronic banners and other media throughout the arena. In year two, we will continue our strong internet presence and our guerrilla marketing along with adding more mass media advertising. This will be done with an ad campaign on the MTA or Metro Transportation Authority. 19.5 million riders weekly in our demographic use the MTA and four out of five rush hour commuters in New York City use some sort of tr public transportation. Also, we will start advertising on Yahoo ads. Yahoo is one of the top five most visited homepages and a great way to reach young working individuals. In year three, we will continue our guerrilla and mass marketing along with adding a sponsorship of Serena Williams. Serena Williams is the premier United States tennis player and a gold medal winner in the Beijing Olympics. These, this sponsorship will focus on the tagline Zapple Fuel Serena and this will appear on our MTA advertising along with advertising on the internet to bolster our online presence. This will be done with YouTube videos such as Serena smashing a Zapple for victory. Now Catherine will introduce the Chicago marketing plan. In year two, Zapple will be introduced into Chicago. In order to launch Zapple in a new city, a blimp colored to look like the Zapple will be traveling around the beaches and neighboring suburbs during the summer months. It can be estimated that this will create 27 million impressions on people throughout Chicago. Just as in New York, street teams will be traveling throughout Chicago, promoting the Zapple and sharing information with consumers. Also, advertisements will be placed on buses, at bus stops, and on commuter trains. Approximately 1.6 million people ride the Metra and L during the work week in Chicago. In-store promotions will be introduced. A static energy ball, shaped like a Zapple, will be placed in a center, standalone display and be located next to the coffee machines. Finally, in year two, we propose a major sponsorship of the Chicago Marathon. This sponsorship would include passing out Zapples along the course and having the Zapple blimp be the eye in the sky for the filming of the race. This will put Zapple in front of 45,000 participants and thousands more viewers. In year three, Zapple will continue to target young professionals through Pandora ads, Yahoo ads, street teams, and advertising on public transportation. Additionally, we would recommend the launch of the first annual Zapple Games. These games would center around the inner city rivalry between the Cubs and the White Sox and resemble the classic Bobbing for Apples games. These games will be held on the weekends to allow suburban ticket holders to participate. The winners will be filmed and placed on Zapple.com. We are confident that with the use of our guerrilla and traditional mass marketing techniques that Zapple will be successfully introduced into the market. Chris Skopek will now describe monitoring and measuring. We believe success and growth stem from a goal-driven and highly coordinated plan. Monitoring and measurement allows Rolling Hills to effectively assess the progress of Zapple and actively guide the direction of the company. In the information age, it takes thousands of happy customers and key distributors to build a successful brand. Therefore, at the heart of monitoring and measurement should be a Customer Relationship Management System, or CRM. The Zapple CRM should be powered by Good Data, a leading business intelligence company. Good Data has been instrumental in the increasing success of companies such as Groupon, Pandora Internet Radio, and Prezi. Central to the Zapple CRM are five key dynamics. Customer satisfaction, marketing effectiveness, sales results, market share, and product spoilage. Customer satisfaction will be monitored by giving instant surveys at the street team level and relationship surveys at zapple.com. Should this measure fall below expectations, Rolling Hills should effectively use its customer feedback to improve the customer experience. Marketing effectiveness 
will be monitored by Peridot, a good data add-on. Peridot is a marketing tool that tracks lead generation down the marketing pipeline, from original point of contact at the street team level and other venues, to the final <coughs> point of sale in the store. Rolling Hills should use the data gathered from this to improve its marketing techniques and ensure that it is using the most effective medium. Next, sales projections will be monitored by comparing distributor data to Rolling Hills projections. Zapple should aim to capture 16 million in sales in year one, 42 million in year two, and 84 million in year three. Should this fall below expectations, Rolling Hills will stand ready to increase its marketing budget and reach more customers. Next, market share will be monitored by comparing Rolling Hills projections to the final results of, the, of, their, of their results and their competitors. In year one, Zapple should aim to capture 10% of the market, year two, 18%, and in year three, 25%. Should this fall below expectations, Rolling Hills has built into its financial statements provisions to decrease the price of the Zapple and still remain profitable. Finally, product spoilage will be monitored by collecting data already gathered by distributors and comparing that to our, our, our projections. An 8% loss rate should be achieved, and if this falls below expectations, merchant feedback and direct feedback should be used to improve the quality of the Zapple. Finally, a response and action team should be put in place to respond to quality control, improve public relations, and monitor a 24-hour hotline that responds to consumer questions and actively promotes Zapple. Now, Derek Thielson will present a financial summary. The Zapple's financial analysis demonstrates a sound, profitable investment. These are a few of the key financial measures I'll be going over with you today, with a full income statement being available in your marketing guide. Sales revenues for the Zapple are projected to hit approximately $16.5 million in the first year, at least doubling each year and increasing to over $84 million by year three. These sales projections are based on our market penetration goals in New York and Chicago markets, with consumers purchasing our Apple only 20 times each year. This is a relatively conservative estimate given the per capita consumption of apples in a given year. Our financials indicate an aggressive approach in year one, with our marketing budget accounting for nearly 60% of our total expenses throughout the first year. This large allocation assumes advertising on some of the most competitive and popular forms of media in the industry today. We believe this is necessary if we hope to hit our market share goals, as well as be seen as a true healthy alternative to products such as Red Bull and coffee in the first year. While marketing efforts remain high in years two and three, our marketing budget comprises an increasingly less share of our total expenses as the Zapple gains acceptance in its target market. While we are projecting a net loss for the first year, this is a result of the large initial marketing push that will ultimately generate a better stance as well as a larger customer base for the Zapple to hopefully generate large positive returns for Rolling Hills in future years. We project the Zapple to offer a net profit of $8.3 million by the second year, an increase to $30.5 million by the third year. Overall, Rolling Hills can expect the rollout of the Zapple product to offer healthy net profits by the second year and have an annualized return of 23.8% over the initial three-year period. Mitch Hyatt will now wrap up our presentation. Zapple will capitalize on the increasing demand for caffeinated products. Its energy boosts paired with health benefits make it the ideal pick-me-up. Chief Promotions is confident that Zapple will branch out in a tree of success, proving energy really does grow on trees. Thank you for listening today. We are now open to questions. How do you get the caffeine into the apple? Thank you. Our patent rights are based on our bathing process where the apple is dunked into the bathing process and the caffeine is then diffused into the apple. What's the audience profile of folks attending um, or watching uh, the U.S. Open? According to U.S. Tennis Research, approximately 56% of those watching the U.S. Tennis Open fall between the age ranges of 20 and 50, so that reaches our target market perfectly. 
So what's success if you're spending 77% of your opening year promotional budget basically on that, I believe, what is success for that big, big ticket item? Success would be reaching each of these individuals on a more personal level than we would be able to and really capture the young working class. And we think this would be a great place to do so. We will have agents there. Our street teams will be located for the event. So they will get to ask questions and learn more about the product. And we hope to use them to even promote our product further to their friends and the friends of their friends. I've got two questions, please. And first of all, I'm a coffee. I love my coffee. So uh, with that said, uh, I, I see some kind of opposition between eating healthier and caffeine use. To me, if someone's really trying to be healthier, I, I see them cutting caffeine out. So how does that play into caffeine use around the apples? And secondly, I think that culture, and you did bring it up, is a big part of coffee drink. I mean, Starbucks does what they do. Coffee shops do what they do for culture. You go, you go in to get a coffee or stay there and do some things. You're not going to have that eating an apple in the front seat of your car walking down the street. So how, how, how do you manage kind of both of those aspects of truly having health, but looking at caffeine? And then how do you truly have someone in the morning change what they've done forever in one year and in three years to get to uh, a $30 million profit? Rolling Hills rollout is largely a blue ocean strategy, which focuses on growing the market for energy products and, and taking some of the sales away from traditional methods such as coffee, Red Bull, and other energy drinks. What a blue ocean strategy is, is when you have a very highly condensed market, such as the caffeine product industry, and you create a product that is, that is differentiated, that both takes, pro takes customers from the traditional market and also brings new people into the market. So we are focusing on growing this industry to capture more customers. And what was your first question? The culture aspect. The culture. How do you fight the, the culture side? Well, through these innovative marketing techniques, we aim to, cap we aim to put many impressions on our, on our potential customers and through this mean, really instill in them a different way of thinking. For example, in the first year, our billboard in Times Square will say a countdown to energy independence. We're really building on the idea that people will continue to use caffeine regardless, but really desire a different me medium of, capture, of gaining that caffeine. We feel that the countdown clock in Times Square and the marketing techniques we use will effectively do that. Can we explore market share a little bit? You said in three years you'd have 25% market share and your competition is caffeinated beverages. So does that mean you're really going to take a quarter of all the caffeinated beverages consumed in New York City and Chicago and they're going to eat apples instead? That's a, that's a similar question to the last one I think, so I'll take that one. Uh, what we feel will happen is through this blue ocean strategy we're growing the market. So instead of necessarily taking away so many people from that market, we're bringing in people that are traditionally fruit eaters that would prefer that fruit in the morning but still that pick-me-up, as well as coffee drinkers that desire that healthy alternative. So, does that answer your question sufficiently? Sure. And also, yeah. also on this question, um, we do believe that, oh, thank you. We do believe that with our marketing strategies, I, you can go on, continue, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'll ask you a question. I want to know how you figured out that you should take this after the caffeine market versus the apple market. In other words, why don't you, if I eat an apple a day, I may be more apt to buy an upgraded apple that has caffeine in it versus if I'm a coffee drinker at Starbucks, buying an apple, switching out my Starbucks. So how did you determine which target should who your real competitor is. Is it upgrading the Apple or is it going after the Starbucks coffee guy? Well, I think that's really similar. We feel that both are our target market. And with the Blue Ocean strategy, we're creating a differentiated product that really sets us apart in a totally, not a different market, but an expanded market. Tim, so you're you're trying to upgrade me from the Apple. You're, you're all, your market's also the Apple user today that you're trying to say, 
step up to a <laughs> right. So high a octane of, apple or whatever. A lot of people like fruit and also like caffeine. So we we know that these people will desire the caffeine that they don't currently take in because they do not prefer coffee. They may not like the taste, or they may not like the health concerns of a traditional energy drink, and are still desire that caffeine boost. So we feel that they will mitigate from those, transition from those traditional apples that they eat in the morning to a caffeinated apple that really provides a great base to start your day. We also noticed with the 240% grow, growth in the caffeine market, this was an excellent opportunity to join and even expand that beyond the 240%. As I, said, as I stated earlier, there has only been a 10% growth in fruit, which is still noticeable, but that 240 really captured our attention. Okay. I'm curious about why you chose drugstores on the early end of marketing. I've never seen produce necessarily at a drugstore. Um, actually, one third of, of the consumers in our target demographic go to convenience stores to purchase immediately consumable food. Also, when we are looking at the cities specifically that we are launching in Chicago and New York, these are the most prevalent stores, convenience stores. Uh, there are hundreds, as we, had, as we had shown, in each city, and we believe this will allow us to successfully reach our customers. As well as going along with that, there's a current trend in the, in the drugstore market that is towards the convenience store method. So that is, the current concern is that there's a food desert in many, in many city, cities because supermarkets are limited because of the limited amount of floor space available and high prices for land. So what we know and what is, we're seeing in the market is a transition from the traditional drugstore sense to one that brings the young professionals in and allows them to purchase things that they may need throughout the day. So I, I've got another question, and this is just about the Apple. The, uh, and I'm, I'm not talking about the Apple computer either. The, uh, <laughs> I think people think of the Apple. You know, there's that old saying, Apple Day keeps doctor away. And it's viewed as a healthy fruit. Now all of a sudden, somebody's changing the Apple. How do you overcome that? Because I, I'm sitting here thinking, is this a pesticide you put on this? Is this a biotech thing you put on this? You haven't told me in any of your stuff how you're getting caffeine. I know that you said you washed it or something like this, but to me, it looks like you're fooling with Mother Nature when you're saying you're putting in caffeine in apples. So I, I want to know, what is, have you tested this concept with consumers to find out how do you overcome that? Because to me, that would be a huge barrier to entry. To the belief of this that this product works I mean first to describe we live in a very innovative day in technology and to keep things moving forward but we have addressed these issues we have talked to the Food and Drug Administration and because the Food and Drug, the Food and Drug Administration considers caffeine as grass which means generally recognized as safe so this additive has already been recognized by the F, the FDA as safe so by adding it to our product it was an easy transition to be to getting support and recognition for it so will you tell me that it's got this additive added to it is the caffeine the the fda calls the generally recognized as safe their wording is additive but it is caffeine okay. that was put in well building on that then um even though it's grass it's still a fresh market and most fresh produce they have they have some that they can't sell and then they turn it into juice or they turn it can you do the same thing with this once it's been treated um, actually our product is actually considered processed not not fresh and because that we also work through the USDA to get to make sure that we had the proper nutrition labeling and packaging is that the answer? That's all I'm 